What's up, guys? Welcome back to Coasters in Perspective. My name is Liam Sather, and I hope you all have a great day. Now, right now I'm recording pretty late, so I'm sure it's going to be more on the shorter side this video, but I'm not really sure. But today, we are going to be talking about an evolution. Now, this is going to be the start of a longer ev- evolution series where I talk about the evolution of a specific ride model. Now, this week, we are going to be talking about the evolution of the hyper roller coaster. Now, I don't see a lot of people doing this, but in the coaster community, people love when a different ride model flourishes in the coaster community. So, one of the most prominent examples of this is the hyper coaster. From its humble beginnings at Magnum XL200 at Cedar Point to what we know as today as Candemonium at Hershey Park and Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. Now, let's jump in to the evolution of the Hyper Roller Coaster. It all started in 1989 when Cedar Point had the dream of building the world's biggest and baddest roller coaster. They contacted Aerodynamics to build them a first of kind. Now, back in the late 80s, the most popular ride type was the one that goes upside down. This was Aero's main masterpiece, with the Mega Looper and the small corkscrew model. But Sierra Point built something different, as with them, with everybody else. They wanted something unique. So they contacted Aerodynamics, as I said before, to build them a unique attraction. Now, unlike other roller coasters, Magnum XL 200 at the time only focused on airtime and speed. This was very unique for the time, but not really unique now, and I'll get back to that later. At the time, Magnum XL200 was heavily regarded as being one of the best roller coasters in the world and being one of the most innovative roller coasters in the world. And even today, Magnum is still praised for its sense of speed and the airtime that you get on the returning run. Many people often like to sit in what's so called the Magnum seat, which is car run, row 3. Car 1, <laughs> row 3. If you didn't get that before. Now, a lot of people go to the back row, but the front row is actually the better seat in the ride. As on those airtime hills, they're almost like triangular shaped. So, it's much better to go in the front row to get the most ejector airtime. Magnum was not the only aero hyper coaster built, as with Desperado at Buffalo Bills and the big one at Blackpool Ple- Pleasure Beach in Europe. Now, up until the early 90s, Aerodynamics pretty much dominated the hypercoaster market. But then, a Swedish company burst out on the scene. This was B&M, or Bollinger and Mabillon. B&M had their humble beginnings with Iron Wolf at Six Flags Great America. But, as the company st- started to grow, they looked at Aero's hypercoaster design and said, Okay, we can do that, but we can do it much, much better. And then came Apollo's Chariot. Apollo's Chariot was Busch Gardens Williamsburg's first ever hyper roller coaster and B&M's first hy- ever hyper roller coaster. Apollo's Chariot was very impressive for its time and definitely topped a lot of people's list for hyper coasters and coasters in general for its numeral floater airtime moments and smoother ride experience that the aerodynamics hyper coasters can't really count for. Magnum XL 200 and the Pepsi Big One and Desperado were very much so criticized for their rough ride, but not Apollo's Chariot. I just love how B&M takes other manufacturers' ride models and just takes them to perfection. It's just perfect. This was the same with the Aerodynamics Suspended Coaster, and B&M easily perfected that with their Inverted Coaster. And it was the same with Togo Stand-Up Coaster. And it was the same with the sit-down roller coaster, too. The next Bollinger and Mabillard Hyper Roller Coaster came to Six Flags and the Six Flags Great America in Gurney, Illinois. This was also in the same year, but Apollo's Chariot opened earlier to claim the title as the world's first B&M Hyper Roller Coaster. This was Raging Bull at Six Flags Great America in Gurney, Illinois. 
Raging Bull was a new generation B&M hyper roller coaster, but well, really you shouldn't say new generation as it was one of the first ones, but today it is widely criticized for having a bad layout and just twisting around. Now, I don't think the layout looks bad. I think it looks very unique and it looks to have some great airtime moments such as that amazing first drop that looks to be in absolutely insanity in the back row. It also looks to have some high g-force moments and ending helix and some good airtime moments off the lift hill and off the main course break run and airtime moments in the second half and high positive g-forces with the helixes. Now I haven't written it yet so take this opinion with a grain of salt. Some other notable hyper roller coasters by B&M are Behemoth at Canada's Wonderland, Canemonium at Hershey Park, which is new for 2020, Diamondback at Kings Island, Goliath at Six Flags Over Georgia, Goliath at La Ronde, Intimidator Carowinds, and Mako at SeaWorld Orlando. All of these rides are amazing in their own right and have unique elements. Except for you, Goliath at La Ronde. You're just, you're just airtime hill after airtime hill. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I mean, really, you got one turnaround. Alright guys, I'm going to end this video off here. Next week, we're going to be talking about, well, not next week. Well, when you see the second part of this video, we're going to be talking about the Morgan Hypers, the Intamin Hypers, and the Vagoma Hypers. Our next video will be definitely a longer video. I'm sorry this was more of a short one. It's late at night and I really want to get to bed. So, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below. Please leave a like, it really shows your appreciation for the channel. and really motivates me to make more videos like these in the future. Now, stay tuned for more here at Coasters in Perspective. I hope you have a great day. Peace.